I think when we tell people what we're doing, they're going to think we're crazy. It's scary. We've put so much of our hard effort into this farm and we've built it up in the last five years and now we're gonna leave it. To understand why, it's probably good if we go back in time. Start at the beginning. We're it's not a long story, but I think we need a hay bale. I'm getting a hay bale. Oh, we can do it up here. Come on up. Uh, is it safe? Oh, this is not safe. Goodness, no, no, don't do that again. <laughs> Turn the lights off. Stay Yeah, that's pretty nice. Take a bail. <laughs> Our story actually begins... Twelve years ago. Our baby was born. We lived in an apartment in the city. We wanted to do the best we could for him as far as food and life. And to you, having grown up on the farm, that meant... Farm. We started trying to figure out how are we going to get out of this apartment? How are we going to escape this apartment? But we were super broke at the time. So buying a farm was not an option. And we looked into getting a mortgage, even to buy the land. And the bank lady called us, this stuck with me forever. She said, uh... It's gonna be really hard for you guys to take out any money because you're like fitting a square peg into a round hole. We started like looking into alternative homes and alternative building methods and that's when we stumbled across the yurt. It's funny, I don't know where we first heard of a yurt or the idea of a yurt, do you remember? No. But I got a book, Life in the Round. It was, it was perfect. It was what we could afford. They come in kits, so they're pretty simple to put together. Even I could do it. You build a little deck. So it was going to be an off-grid yurt in this little parcel of land, wherever we could find it. Composting toilet. It was so simple. It was just a simple little cabin that we could start our life together with our baby boy. And we, were, we, we bought the book, we were doing this, we were building a yurt. And when my dad heard about that, I think he was aghast. <laughs> a ute, you're not gonna live in a ute. Especially because we had a, a nine month old and I was pregnant with our second. Yeah, the yurt dream, it, it ended up not happening. We found a little house on a parcel of land in Northwest Connecticut that fit our needs better for the time. You were pregnant, we had a little baby, and the practical thing to do was move into an actual existing house. And that's what we did. We did the practical thing, which I think we often do in life, a lot of people we yeah. have to choose the practical thing balance. over the, the dream. The, there's what you'd love to do, and then there's the practical thing. It's nice if you can kind of meet in the middle, and I think we did that in Connecticut. We've got the property with the house on it already, but we still kept homesteading. So we, we did our garden there, and you did your hunting there, but we also added pigs, and then goats, and then chickens, and then goats again. And I don't think we even realized it at the time, how much we were gonna get into homesteading. Our initial dream was a simple off-grid cabin on a piece of land with some chickens and some hunting, which is a homestead, right? But we like dove in and really got to love the animals and the milking and the cows and- Yeah, the livestock. And before you know it, we were outgrowing the Connecticut homestead, right? Like, suddenly we were too big for our acreage there. So then when my dad offered us to come to Pennsylvania and help manage the family farm, it seemed like the right time. It was perfect timing. We we yes, it is true, for real this time. We are actually moving and we're going to be selling our homestead. Your dad was like, hey, why don't you guys come and manage the family farm, which is 100 plus acres. 
So it was perfect. It was good timing. And we could show it all on the channel and it was such an exciting move. It was a scary move, right, to move homesteads and move states. We were leaving a place that we owned that was ours to come to a place that we didn't. And there was the concern, and even in the comments it popped up like, you know, you won't own, you're just managing a family farm and that could be, there could be problems there. But actually we look at the last five years here and we think this has just been an incredible opportunity. It's been like an incredible learning experience. That's it. It's not ours. This farm's not ours. It belongs to my the dad family. and his brother and sisters. It's the family farm that was my great grandfather. So it's totally the family farm and it has been. And we've been managing about half of it or a third of it. It's like our four year college experience yeah. here. It's been bigger than we ever could have done on our own doing the field management, the grazing, the fencing, the barn, hay, figuring all this stuff out, tractors on a larger scale than we ever would have been able to as homesteaders on our own. We've been here going on five years now and in that time we've been able to produce all our families meat. We've been able to get into doing dairy, of course we have egg production here. We grew our cow herd from just a single family milk cow to now we have 12 cows out in the field, cows and bulls combined. We went from having just mini jerseys to getting into different breeds. We tried out some highlands. We have a Guernsey cow. What's been your favorite part about it? Like what's been your favorite thing to learn? I know what your favorite thing Oh, is, grazing. Yeah. Grazing. I found my homestead calling. I hate cleaning the barn. And so I was like, well, I'll go move the animals in the field. And I never came back to the barn. <laughs> What's been your favorite thing to learn here over the last four years? Cows. So much cows. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to rotationally graze every animal, including camels. We rotationally graze camels with different kinds of fencing setups and different kinds of equipment. To have the space to be able to grow our herd as much as we have, to bring a bull on when we needed to and we couldn't get the AI to work, and to try different breeds of cows, to be able to milk with the machine. That wasn't something I did in Connecticut. And I was able to do that because my dad's very mechanical and he fixed the pump for me so my milker would work. He's been able to help me figure out how to use a milk machine on my cows. So cows. The answer is always cows. I got like a shepherd in me. Like I like to wander through the forest, wander the rolling hills, guide the herd where they have to go. Except um, you don't like sheep. So. But definitely not sheep. What do you call a, a cow, cow shepherd? A cow herder. A cowboy! That's what you call it. I want to be a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, it's been an awesome college education. And now... Get it? What was that? That was the uh, oh, tassel. Oh, passing the tassel. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> We're graduated. We're... Okay. Now we are moving on yeah now we're, we're, leaving. On. we're leaving now we're leaving and i think that's what people are going to think is crazy oh i already saw a few comments because we hinted at this in our recent day in the life of video if you caught it if you didn't go back and watch it people were like what you just spent five years like making this a great farm because we did a lot of infrastructure projects here and just management and it's I mean, we produced more food than we've ever produced in our life this year. Yeah. And we're going to leave it all. And it's scary. Maybe a little crazy. Maybe. It's also... What do you call it? It's like fulfilling a dream of ours. It's fulfilling... What, well, what's I mean, a nicer that's word? why. It's... it's, we're it's because of a dream. Just because of this dream we've had since we had a little boy 12 years ago. This dream to have a little simple cabin off grid that we made with our own hands just for our family. Hmm. It never went away. Give me chills. We've, throughout the years in Connecticut, here, it always comes back up. Yeah, our off grid homestead. We started watching, do you remember in the apartment, watching uh, Frontier House together? Yes, Frontier House. 
Is that where this all started? <laughs> Can I blame Thank PBS? You, PBS. <laughs> yeah, Frontier House. Have you, you ever seen it? Them build their cabin with him and his dad build that cabin together. Yeah. And that, like, and because you did not come from this agricultural. No. Your dad's a builder, though. Yeah. His dad was a builder. Yeah. And I think seeing them work together, Good. yeah, I think that put that bug in you to someday build a house with your dad. My dad's a master builder. He built homes right up, <laughs> right up until I was born. And then he stopped because the market crashed and he had to do something else. So I never, ever got to build a home with my dad. I did get to build a barn uh, back at our Connecticut homestead with him. And that was such a cool experience. My, our son got to help a little bit, but yeah, they, they were, were little, little at the time. And it was just this little taste of like, oh man, yeah, remember that, that dream of like doing that. We are so fortunate right now to still have all our parents. And our parents bring so much knowledge, wisdom to building, to planting, to designing, that we really want to take this time now and have this opportunity with them to build our home. So finally, not only will I get to be working on a from scratch home with my dad, you also have a dad who's really good at this and you'll be able to, you're gonna say that? Or? Well, I can't, I'm feeling a little emotional Oh no! <laughs> We're gonna get to work with our dads and our moms and too. And our moms. We're gonna and get to work with skills. our family. Uh, and our kids, that's different. We never, our, our little cabin dream, our, our little ones, our biggest ones were so little. I mean, we're gonna have generations putting this house together. Are you feeling emotional? Yeah, too? that's awesome. <laughs>
Uh, also some Kuni Kuni pork and some heritage. You said you called it heritage. Sorry. Also some commercial heritage. Nope. <laughs> also some commercial pork. Uh, Berkshire. No. Yorkshire land race cross pigs. And we're hoping in the future we're gonna do a video like a blind taste test where we try all the different kinds of pork and tell you blind, like, this is our favorite. Let's see if it's Heritage, Idaho Pasture Pig, Cooney Cooney, or Commercial Cross. They all turned out really, really nice. But I that was my spoiler alert. Spoiler well, alert. Spoiler alert. They're all delicious. Back to you, Oz. Let's go. I think uh, we gotta move some cows here. Let's go move some cows and then we can tell you about what you can look forward to with this this project coming up. Oh, look at that cutie. Look at that cute baby. She's so cute. He's starving. Hi. Oh, are you starving? What we're trying to do is what so many people who email us are trying to do is to start a small homestead from scratch. And it's not easy. It's not like we go and stake our claim on some un, unsettled land and just have to survive there. Is that all? That's all. They just had to survive and do Not everything from scratch. <laughs> the cool thing is this project, we are going to do it from scratch. Yes. We've Which never done this before. We've never done this. We moved to a place with a house in Connecticut and buildings. We are going to do this from zero. <laughs> just bare land. You can play with it. Even back in Connecticut, we didn't start our YouTube channel till a couple years into our homestead. So a lot of the infrastructure we put in that was like foundational infrastructure, we never showed we on camera. Film, yeah. And when we moved here, I mean, that was there. So we've never been able to do this from scratch and we've never been able to show it. And we're so excited to let you see Bear Land turn into a homestead but with the experience of over a decade of homesteading guiding the decisions, as opposed to just being noobs and saying like, oh, I don't know, let's see if this works. Number, the, the second thing, our second goal when we do this, and this is a big one for us and so many people, because, boy, debt's a killer. We're gonna try to do this debt free. Yeah, we are not going the traditional route of getting a mortgage. For one, when you're doing a bare, earth build yeah, it's challenging it's and a lot harder to get oh i bet she did oh. 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 That's not an, it, it could be something that we're able to do a video on in the future but we're coming into this with the goal to be debt free yeah. during our build now lest you think the reason we're going to do this right we're not doing this debt free because He's the Monopoly man. Although, Although the I mustache. have the mustache. The mustache is the only thing me and the Monopoly man have in common. What does the Monopoly man do? Like, how does he have so many properties? That's the life lesson about Monopoly. You're all in the game. Meanwhile, the elites, they're just making you play the game. They have all the money. They printed it. So, anyway. We could do a whole podcast we're on that. Not, He's not the Monopoly man, unfortunately. And we do hope to do this step free. It's okay. going to be something that we do in stages um, and lots of stuff ourselves. Very low budget. We're going to be looking to alternative building methods. We're actually going to just share what we're spending on different parts of the project. Like how much does the roof cost us? How much does the walls? of? Because we're going to build a home from scratch. So what does that cost? What does a septic system cost? What does, what does our water system cost? If you're wondering what does low budget mean, as we go, we'll share with you what we spend on each element. And that way you can know if it's a technique you could use to do your own homestead. Another thing that comes out of this is if you're watching and we share a helpful tip that can motivate you to start it. 
hopefully one thing that comes out of this is maybe we'll share some... Yeah, come on. Watch and we do something and you say, you know what? That's exactly the tip I needed. That'll help me on my homestead. I can hear about other people's journeys who have started too. If we're gonna do this debt free and if we're gonna do this low budget, we're gonna have to do a lot different than what we did on this homestead. We'll cover that in a future video. While you're waiting for that one, watch our day in the life of video. You'll see us producing all our family's meat, a lot of our family's dairy and eggs, learn about all the production we've done at this homestead, and be excited to see just a glimmer of what might be coming at the new one.